This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Don't give up what you want, take it back. Wait for the hey guys, it is a wrestling mayhem show, and this is a very special edition. If you're catching this on the screen, that means it's uh, the late week in July, and that means I'm in Philadelphia, which is ironic because I'm closer to a lot of wrestling, but not there for wrestling. Uh, so uh, I thought it was a good chance for us to do another pre record episode like we did over the holidays and bring back Impact Therapy, where we bring uh, uh, the m- two of the most... Um, impacted people by TNA wrestling because they covered it either for here with the midweek war or writing or whatever the case may be. But we have back with us, first of all, the regular on the show. Uh, he is from Poughkeepsie, New York, and he's the only one on the Mayhem roster with a future Endeavor letter from the WWE. He is mad. Mike? Oh, man, Sorg. Uh, this may just end up being into me bashing Raw. <laughs> <laughs> This may just turn into that. Yeah, there's been some revelations since you've been on last. Oh, and don't even get me started on what they did with the network. Mm, what? Wait, what? The, we'll get into it. Okay, we'll get into it. We'll get into, we'll it. Get into it. And anyways, uh, we have back with us, because we can't have Impact Therapy without uh, the other fellow inmate uh, for this. <laughs> is <laughs> is, uh, which, asylum. is which is so appropriate. Shirley Doe, Pittsburgh wrestling legend with us as well. Hey. I love TNA. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to That's start crazy. this off. We were talking about a little bit about video games and that we don't get the chance to play. And, and Mike mentioned about loading games on their phone and everything. I had a little side endeavor, sort of so, so techie for a moment. I grabbed, you know, you, you know how if you have a newer iPhone, you can't like download some of your older games because they haven't been updated for the new operating system and they had a cutoff kind of to it. So I grabbed yeah, my iPads like that, yeah. Yeah, iPads and, and everything like that. Like I think they got upgraded to sixty four bit or something. So I, I went in I had an old iPhone four four S, whatever it is, still running like iOS seven. I was like just going through and downloading all those old games because there's old weird WWE games and things like that. And I went through and I found like there's a TNA game that I used to play. Oh no. That oh well, this is good. But it wasn't like a wrestling action game. It was more sort of RPG ish. And, and had a little bit of fun storylines. It had, like, your Samoa Joes and your AJ Styles and your Jeff Jarrett's in there. Um, and I remember really enjoying this because it was the first kind of iteration of, of wrestling. And I think it was officially adapted from, like, a mobile, like, flip phone game into iOS at the time. Um, which, you know, didn't have enough power to get, like, you know, there's even a WWE 2K that's on iPhone. Um, but sadly, the resolution is wrong. And no matter which way you turn your phone, like your sideways screen just trails off the screen and it's completely unplayable for some reason. Um, so that was my TNA sadness I wanted to share with you guys uh, b- before we Shouldn't get this I, started. That, that's just an indication for the whole company. <laughs> Is it? I can tell you, even sadder, I don't have a smartphone because I don't believe in them because I'm, I think we're all being tracked, but that's a long story that maybe we shouldn't get into here. Uh, but I have a flip phone, and I used to have a TNA game for my flip phone uh, where you made you had a maker wrestler, and you couldn't be a TNA guy. Right. And you could only fight three guys. Abyss, AJ, and um, Samoa Joe were the only guys in it. it the- and you fought them over and over and over again. But it was all like like kind of selecting the moves, and you had like maybe yeah. three moves and, and stuff like that, and it kind of leveled up, right? Yeah, and you had to like literally play it with the numbers. It was really. <laughs> so, and then when I got my phone update, they got rid of all the update, all the games, because nobody other than old people used these. And and then, uh, but I played a lot of the TNA game in the bathroom. <laughs> so I played a lot of the Doom Mobile as well. But it seems, uh, seems like yeah. the appropriate place for a TNA yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. It's, I also like the TNA game that was for. Uh, the old Xbox for PS2 and Xbox where uh, to get out of submissions, you had to do like dance, dance revolution moves with your controller. <laughs> you had to do like uh shuriken, like combo things to get out of submissions. 
Oh, it, ironically, it looked better than the last WWE 2K18 graphics was, but I'm pretty sure I found bit. some <laughs> images here, by the way, for you guys that might be online on our video version of the show. Um, I think this looks like this looks like the mobile version, if if not like the flip phone version. This is at least like similar to what I played on the on the uh, iPhone. And uh, I, I say there was there was enough to it to make it kind of fun, you know. You had kind of yeah. like these, like you had like a punch button, a kick button. It, it kind of looks like the old like King of the Ring <laughs> games for the Game Boy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but except it wasn't like a free roaming action kind of thing. I don't know what the game this is. That's something else. Because I think there is a like 3D mobile game. Yeah, this looks a lot like the one that I played. And, and this, and I think they upgraded for like maybe the the uh, you know iOS and everything with a little bit more characters and everything. But it was, if it wasn't for the games, we wouldn't have suicide. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Which is a, and, and thank God we have suicide. But here's a dumb TNA question. Like, like the owner of TNA at that time, you know, what's her name? Uh, Dixie, Dixie Carter. Dixie Carter. Yeah. That's different designing women. Uh, she worked in PR, right? Like she ran a PR shop. I worked with some really bad PR people, which I legally still can't talk about until April of next year. But I've worked with really bad PR people, and uh, I've never worked with one bad enough. Like, we should name this character Suicide, because no one will be offended by that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially when you had, like, you put Suicide in the same division as a character named Homicide. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know, I'm looking up the, the people that have played uh, Suicide. And I'm interested to know if you can name all of them, guys. Ooh. Oh. Um, well, the easy I could name three, and I, that was all I could get. The easy one's Christopher Daniels, right? Yes. Yep. And then uh, uh, TJ Perkins. Yep. I want to say Alex Shelley did it one time. No. Nope. Maybe once, but it's not listed on here. I'm, okay. the, I'm on Wikipedia. Or are you thinking Saban? Oh, I might be thinking Saban. No. Austin Aries stole the costume to win the X Division. Championship. Oh God! I yeah. Okay, I remember that. that. Yeah. Yeah. One of them's in uh, in IWC. Wait, currently? Yep. What? Huh. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds Wait. like we need another guest on the show. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> it's Jack. No, uh, it's uh, Jonathan Gresham. Oh. Oh. Gresham was okay. suicide. It says here on Wikipedia. I'm going with Wikipedia. Frankie Kazarian. Uh, Kyoshi, uh, Caleb Conley. Okay. And then who did his yeah. voice and motion capture for the video game? Ooh. I feel like that was Christopher, Christopher Daniels. Loki. Loki. Ah. Okay. Oh, yeah, that makes that makes sense. That's right. I am suicide. <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> that's why I, I can't go low enough. Yeah, I, I think Gresham did him recently because they brought back suicide before I stopped watching. Yeah. Now it, it was between Gresham and Conley, I think that uh, flipped. I remember they did it. the big thing with Hogan, where Hogan brought out TJP, and was like, "Brother, this guy, this kid's name's TJ Perkins," and like endorsed him after he took the hood off. Then he like lost yeah. the next week. Yeah. <laughs> it's a typical oh. T. Anytime, T sorry, I just jumped right into TNA, but I think the biggest rule of TA TNA is anytime you introduce a new performer. Like, make a big deal about it week one. Week two, they job in the dumbest way possible. Mm -hmm. So that you put no faith whatsoever into them. Week three, totally give up on them. And then, like, week six, bring them back with a push. Is usually the way things work. Like, I, inevitably, anytime they put, like, a heel stable together, outside of the aces and eights, which I'm still getting over, um, <laughs> they would... My wife is not going to sleep with me after this, are you? Nope. nope. She said, nope. So... <laughs> <laughs> the, the sacrifices the sacrifice i'm making for a source vacation <laughs> uh, it's a it's a word of workation work. actually but yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> workation but yeah he has a wife too but she's working too somehow we both made it happen <laughs> two bearded gray-haired wrestling fans <laughs> I'm, work, and small I'm working on both those things. You're working on gray hair and wrestling f fandom, or well, okay. I'm, I'm I'm working on the beard and the gray hair. Oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. Work on work on the marriage. Well, I, I haven't gotten that far yet. Yeah. Then then all three <laughs> and all three of us have worked in some way in the wrestling business. We have you you a little more directly, of course. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, um, but anyways, well, let's get into that because you mentioned uh, before the show that we re- we really didn't get into the Hulk Hogan era of TNA. That we, we there was enough just TNA to TNA about at that um, time. Yeah, um, I'm looking through my old I looked through my old reviews of when Hogan was coming in, mm-hmm. and then everything for the first like in, from when they announced it to when it happened, which was about like two and a half three months. They said he was coming on every single commercial break. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and every single match they would bring it up. And they would show that Hulk Hogan, Jeff Jarrett press conference from Tokyo yeah, every fucking week. And that happened like a year before. Yeah. And it, like it got to the point where I was like, I don't even care if Hulk Hogan shows up. You know what's awesome is like New Japan's gotten so good that you forget that Jeff Jarrett was in Bullet Club. <laughs> <laughs> so were the outlaws, weren't they? Uh, I think or, at least, or at least Billy was, right? Either that or Billy was with the other dude who's uh, Yoshi, what's his name, who was like Bullet Club Hunter. And they brought him in because I know that when he came in, he got an outfit made just for Billy Gunn and said, here, this is for you. And he's like, yeah, I ain't wearing that. <laughs> God. Which is odd. He's like, no, I'm just going to wear the gear that I always had. Yeah, of course, because why would you want to match a new stable that you're joining? The thing that's amazing is like the first week, like you would think, I'm looking at the write-up I did. Uh, like it's your first, like the first time people watched the January 4th, 2010 impact was the one that debuted Hogan and Bischoff and it was the Monday night show. And it was like a really big deal. And like, it's the first time a lot of people are ever going to see your show. So instead of showing, like introducing who your best guys are or telling people about it, the show started with Toby Keith and, uh, clips of everybody that's ever been in TNA. Mm Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with it if you like Toby Keith. My wife just yelled, "What's wrong?" With yeah, but like, I, I remember, I remember that night because it was going up head to head with Raw. I was on Twitter breaking down because I had um, picture in picture at the time, so I could watch both. And I remember grading when they both went to commercial, who had the stronger segment of the show, and Impact almost never won, even though it was their first live like episode. It's just weird because I don't remember some of these names. Like, I know Pope De Niro, but Desmond Wolf, who is he? I don't even remember. Oh, Desmond that's... Desmond Wolf was, um, oh, he Nigel. was with Magnus. He was, right? he was yeah, Nigel, Nigel. Nigel McGinnis. <laughs> yeah. Oh, was that what his name was? Yeah. yeah. Oh, man, that's sad. <laughs> I don't remember. Also, I forgot that Bubba the Love Sponge was the announcer backstage for four weeks before he got in that fight with, uh, what's her name? <laughs> well, about... Because there was the flood where she's from, and then he said, who cares about these people? So she beat him up backstage. Well, didn't he also, like, make racist comments about her on his radio show? Yes, he did. He yeah. called her Donkey Kong or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Jeez. And now and now she's on Glow doing oh, is she? awesome. Yeah. Oh, oh. Have, you, have you not seen Glow? I watched two episodes of the first season, and I hated it. And I was like, oh. uh. It, it, it gets better. It does gets, it? Yeah. It's but just... Yeah, my, I have such a small entertainment time budget. That's fair. <laughs> but, yeah, she's in it. She's in season two and everything, and no one knows where Bubba the Love Sponge is. He's still on, ter- he's on terrestrial radio now, which is – is there still that? Yes. <laughs> the, the other thing I, I mentioned, too, is, like, on the first night of TNA, it's, like, when they had just signed Jeff Hardy. Mm-hmm. And the first time they showed him, they cut to him backstage, and he was painting one of his shitty paintings. Do you remember when he used to just paint and they would have all his like fan club come backstage and freak out and he handed that chubby girl a painting and she started screaming? It was like a five minute segment. And I was like, well, obviously someone's going to jump him and nothing happened. It was just him handing paintings out to girls with Jeff Hardy face paint. They even let him record his own music, Modest. Remember that? Modest. <laughs> to the top. Oh. They sold his CD on TNA's uh, website. There was also a mystery guy the first night that was taking guys out. He took out Rhino. And uh, Samoa Joe wrestled Abyss. And Beer Money also got taken out the first night. So, like, why have them? Who did they, did they ever reveal who the mystery guy was? That's a great question. Was it Bubba Ray? It might have been, but the Nasty Boys showed up and they set up a feud with them in Team 3D that night. <laughs> of course. Oh, the did, on it. Wow. Wait, wait, wait. Did, uh, did Ed Leslie show up at some point? He didn't, which is pretty amazing. Yeah. They did uh, AJ and Kurt Angle the first night, and then uh, the NWO beat up Mick Foley the first night. And Orlando Jordan, uh, 
started doing his thing. Mm. Where he started <laughs> squirting things everywhere. Yeah, where he squirted milk and stuff all over himself. Well, and then he upset know, Ric Flair at the bar and he got fired. We've come a long way from Orlando Jordan squirting liquid on himself to someone like the Velveteen Dream. So yeah. I'm, I'm, we've come a long way. Yeah. Is, is it sad that uh, Orlando Jordan is the last guy that Ultimate Warrior ever wrestled? Ooh. Wow, that's really sad. Yeah. That's a deep that, cut. <laughs> wait, where did this happen? In uh, Australia or Germany. Some, yeah, the, he had a couple of shows where he would do like indies in like different countries. I hadn't seen him in 10, 15 years. Wow. It was like he he had threatened for years to do matches like that all over the place. And then like that was the only one, one of the few that ever happened. It was in Barcelona, Spain in 2008. Didn't he wrestle Hogan on one of those shows? I don't know. It's that after retiring in 99, he only wrestled one other match. It, he won the match and what became the new wrestling evolution world heavyweight champion and then immediately vacated the title in the ring. Because, <laughs> of course. Oh, uh, God. He's oh, my fa- You know what? I mean, I know he was a, a hate filled racist, but time has been kind to him in my memory. Uh, he okay. was lucky to get in ahead of the social media era and do the things that he did. I, I, think, I think you're allowed to be a fan of Ultimate Warrior but not be a fan of Jim Helwig. But he changed his name. To yeah, but Jim Warrior. Helwig doesn't that, exist. That's true. Yeah, that's true. he just became Warrior. Yeah, that that, that does kind of hurt that a little bit, doesn't I mean, it? He also yeah. did a comic book where he beat up Santa Claus and stole his outfit. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Didn't he also rape Santa Claus? Yeah, well, the picture looks yeah. kind of like it. Kind of yeah. suggestive. Yeah. That's all about the stressicity. <laughs> I don't worry too much about Warrior. It's really sad. So The other thing... Go ahead, sir. I was gonna say, like one of the, like this era, like one of the high points for me of this area was this era was that they were starting to tour the TV a little bit. They yeah. they did IUP in Indiana, PA, which was still an hour drive out of Pittsburgh. Um, I think I got free tickets to it. But for me, being you know growing up a Hulkamaniac, I was excited to see like well, I got to see Hulk Hogan, you know, in a little bit of a smaller setting, you know. Uh, and it's one of the few times I, I got a chance to do that. And I, by the way, I don't think I ever saw Hulk Hogan wrestle in person. I think it was always like, cause I think the other one was in uh, WWE when I think he had a debate with Shawn Michaels of some sort, uh, oh, on man. a raw here in town. But, uh, <laughs> so, so, but at least like, again, inner Hulk, maniac growing up, that was like a high point for me. I got to see him wrestle, uh, Sergeant Slaughter in a boot camp match oh, at the Beaver nice. Center. Nice. Uh, when Slaughter was full uh, Iraqi, and my brother wore a full Iraqi Sergeant Slaughter outfit, <laughs> <laughs> Slaughter roll shirt and a and a beret, and, and had an Iraqi flag. Like he was not where he was like like, 13, like eleven, probably eleven years old. Not afraid at all of getting heat. Jeez. <laughs> and like Slaughter was like, maybe you shouldn't dress like that afterwards when we ran into him. My brother, <laughs> like, I love you. You're my favorite. God, that's amazing. Slaughter's finisher was a noogie then too, the atomic noogie. Yeah. I can't remember what he, he wasn't doing the Cobra Clutch for some reason when he was in. Maybe, Hogan didn't want to take it. Who knows? What a weird era of wrestling. Where they, I love that era where they canceled WrestleMania because of terroristic threats or they didn't sell enough tickets. And it, it was even weirder when he was like, I want my country back. Like but they teamed him with, with a hacksaw. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was 100% in on that. As a G.I. Joe fan, mm-hmm. I was so ready for the Sarge to come back. Like, did, was he G.I.? He was G.I. Joe before he went full Iraqi, right? Yeah, like, he had... It's funny, because he had just lost... Hasbro wasn't making G.I. Joe at the time, so he still had to go get everything to go through them. And then once Hasbro started making the figures again, the WWE figures, they that's how they made him. You see, that was, like, the, a big deal that they made a figure of him. And so that's why, like, uh, the Mattel ones don't have any of the... the, start, the typical look of slaughter and stuff which is weird the rights were crazy the other big thing was going to happen then sorry to get full gi joe in a tna show they were going to use vader as uh the cobra version of sergeant slaughter and make a vader figure to go with it and it oh. never never got past the playing stages which would have been great because they would have had to have a match and then vader would have just been vader i would have loved to see vader with like the full mastodon helmet but have it be a cobra head instead it's a well, also, Warrior was the original Vader uh, in New Japan. 
because in the sketches they had uh, the original sketches of Vader, he was like super muscular, and he had asked it was either going to be Sid or uh, Jim Helwig, and Helwig had asked uh, Owen Hart. He's like, I think I'm going to do because he was really sick of. He was still like on the C team shows, not really getting used. And no one was like, honestly, you don't want to go there. <laughs> He's like, you're not going to make it. You're yeah. not going to do that well. You're not going to fit in. And then they found Leon White right after that. And then that's who ended up being Vader. Wow. I, I found an interview with Vader talking about that. I'll drop in the chat room for everybody that's joining us. Cause that's, I it's, definitely I definitely want to dig into that a little bit more. Yeah, and Vader was managed by Beat Takeshi, who's like the uh, Carson of Japan. He's like a really big stand-up comedian. He also is in the movie Battle Royal. He's the the uh, principal in Battle Royal that kills all the kids. Oh, okay. he's a really he's a really famous actor. Um, they did an angle where he was going to feud with Anoki, and he was bringing in all sorts of guys. And uh, the first night they did it, when Vader b- beat Anoki in uh, Choshu in five minutes, all the fans in Sumo Hall tore their seats out and threw them in the ring. They were so upset because they thought it was fake. They weren't allowed to run Sumo Hall for like four years. Jeez. So it was like a big and. Uh, What'd you say, baby? Yeah, he's in Ghost in the Shell too. He's the uh, leader of the good guys in Ghost in the Shell. <laughs> Always knows Beat Takeshi, which makes me love him. Yeah, it's, I know things. And uh, so the crazy thing was, Beat Takeshi got so worried about that riot, he quit wrestling and left the angle like a match into it. But he had actually. So wait, this is the last part. I promise. He had started a wrestling school as part of this angle, and his first three students were Judo, Godot, and. Uh, uh, super Dolphin, the wrestler who became Dolphin eventually, which is crazy. So the Booker of New Japan is in, became a wrestler because of Beat Takeshi, who managed Vader. I don't know where this whole story started, because then Sergeant Slaughter. It's a big <laughs> circular, non-TNA story, sorry. That's wow. a lot of knowledge, Joe, sorry. That was insane. Yeah. Well, I know way too- Way too much about Japanese wrestling. Holy crap! That was a yeah. Well, you know what? That's a fir- that's a perfect <laughs> that's a perfect you know, just juxtaposition of how how much TNA ruined Okada. There you go. There you go. <laughs> that's the first thing I thought about this morning. Is I was talking to somebody. Uh, some, uh, who I was talking to? Oh, on this one, my friend Brian like never watched TNA or anything, and like. He's like, oh, and he's like a big Okada fan. And I was like, you know, he was in TNA. I'm like, oh, really? What did he do? I'm like, well, they tied him up and beat him up. Like, <laughs> be, and, and Samoa Joe was supposed to be the Green Hornet, and he was Kato. Yeah. And he's like, but really, what did they have him do? Because he's the best wrestler in the world. I'm like, that's what they had him do. That's what they had him do. They had to personally send someone to apologize at the Tokyo Dome this year to ensure that they may get a chance to use some of their guys. Jeez. Was that his excursion? Was that Okada's excursion? What that was his part of his excursion. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Jesus. Yeah. It doesn't. I hope cool. in uh, in the new Fire Pro you actually get to go on an excursion in the uh, RPG mode. I'm hoping you don't get to go to TNA. Oh my God! I hope you get to go to Lucha Underground. There you do get to go to. Oh. There's a CMLL building in it, which is pretty cool, and it has the uh, the the cheerleaders and everything, the girls on the way to the ring and everything. So. <laughs> But like, because there's so many fake promotions in it outside of New Japan, so you get to meet guys and you get new skills from when you go to different places. That's really great, dude. Is that, is that new Fire Pro game out yet? It's out for PC. The New Japan content isn't out until I think the 28th or the 29th, and then it comes out for PS4 at the same time. Oh, does it come but, out for Xbox? No. Fuck. There's no Xbox in. Uh, <laughs> Xbox isn't really big in Japan. Yeah, because Sony basically runs Tokyo. <laughs> yeah, so I'm debating between that and Spider-Man. Uh, Shit. Oh. But, uh, but the, the nice thing about the PC version is there's so many mods of like where you can put the camera, and the uh, Steam store is already full of guys. That's my dream is to have all the Rise guys uh, available for download at some point. Nice. Start, start making them uh, so that people can beat me up. In <laughs> My brother's the king of it though, because like he uh, he likes using junior guys and just crushing like heavyweights, which is really hard to do in that game because like it's one of the few games where you know in WWE they're like, do you want to put weight collision on and then Rey Mysterio can give Ronas to Andre the Giant? Yeah. Um, this game actually is like a real, well. Oh, so so it actually accounts for weight and stuff like that. Yeah, and then like if you try to do a finisher right away, you'll collapse. You might get pinned. They even oh, have like. That's cool. There's even, like, uh, each guy has, like, a personality thing in it where, like, for Misawa, like, it actually simulates the way he fought where the more damage he takes at the end of the match, the more damage he does back to you. So, like, uh, 
there's like his his style fighting and then Muda style fighting are both listed as like skill sets. Like where Muda, like the more he does to the legs, the more his submission power goes up. It's way too intricate where there's like formulas for building characters and stuff. Like I've wasted a lot of my life on Fire Pro Wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> like ow, like hours. Jeez. Of simulating tournaments, and then I have like booking sheets of like how I put together tournaments of Japanese indie guys that have wrestled in front of ten people that I like. Do you know what I mean? But they're like on these shows, like Andrew <laughs> and well, Andrew wrestled for bigger guys. He wrestled in IWC too. Anyway, TNA. Sorry. <laughs> well, it's a good sidebar. I, That's a good sidebar. TNA guys, I will say I use Jeff Hardy sometimes. <laughs> TNA. I mean, Oz, did you guys watch the Hardys documentary on I WWE did. Network? I did. I, I was. I was about to get like that's kind of because on the network, they're telling people to go watch a lot of Impact. Mm-hmm. How did they get all that Impact footage to show? That's what I'm wondering. Is that from? There was the, some when they were on Sports Channel America or whatever that other channel was, but. Well, every time I, they they show some, there's there's um there there's going to be a mark on the footage or after the the presentation of go see more uh, TNA wrestling at GWN and they plug the app yeah. for oh, Glo- that's cool. Global Wrestling Network. So so there's some deal, some partnership, and I've actually been saying for a while that I think this is kind of a precursor to whatever partnership they just absorb the footage, uh, to be quite honest. Or you know something with Anthem maybe that they just become like maybe a tier on, on WWE Network because there's kind of been teasing of that with that in Ring of Honor, uh, which I think makes sense because I, I, when you look at somebody like AJ Styles and that entire – you know, back catalog or, or the resurgence of uh, I mean, the Hardys, like we just saw in this uh, this documentary get represented. Yeah, even it, even Kurt Angle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even Kurt Angle. Like, Kurt spent almost longer in TNA than he has in WWE. And Kurt has yeah. some good stuff in TNA. Yeah, he does. All his Samoa Joe matches. The thing is, if they had had that Joe footage, it would have helped him a lot more of getting him over when he first came in. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, it was, so you, could argue, you could argue they still need that footage to help get him I over. love him, but they... It's a mixture of injuries and timing. And, uh, well, they, they brought him in on the wrong show. Yeah. And I, and I said, like, this is kind of a rant, but, like, when they first brought in Samoa Joe and he was there to attack Seth Rollins, I'm like, why is he on Raw? He is not going to prosper on Raw, like, mm-hmm. at all. Like, he should have been put on SmackDown the worker show with age with AJ and with all them. And he got completely lost in the shuffle and then he got injured. And then he's a, he's a footnote on SmackDown. It's, like it's, wrestling is super easy. So I tell people all the time, like it's really easy to get, it doesn't seem like it, but when you make it complicated, like TNA has for longer than like, honestly, they ran out of money the second week of being in business. See what I mean? Like that's why Health yeah. South came on, and that's why the Carters came in, and yeah, and they, they, that that's been outlined. So like literally, like J- Jeff Jarrett and whatever initial backers ran out of that money, and they they had to run for it. Like they could have been just done after two weeks, and we could have had none of this extra history of wrestling. The the basic idea of the original TNA makes sense to me of like weekly pay per views. I think today, the way with social media and stuff, and because like, back then there was no way to advertise it outside of being on TV every week. And they weren't. Yeah. But the idea of doing like a weekly show and charging for it is not a bad idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you could do that. You could do that on like Twitch now or, yep. or anywhere, Vimeo. Really. Like stop out cancer too, that you can get from yeah. the wrestling mayhem guys. Yeah. Yeah. Indie wrestling.us <laughs> available as of this recording. I just saw it today and sent it to someone and said, here's that show you wanted. Like it's almost like, I kind of feel like Tommy Dreamer has taken the model of TNA mm-hmm. and actually done it correctly with House of Hardcore. And sold it back to TNA. Yeah. He <laughs> sold it back to TNA? Well, yeah, because they keep showing matches from Hard- House of Hardcore shows on oh, Impact shit. Wrestling. Oh, wow. Because okay. I love when I watch the times I've watched Impact lately, it's like a mixtape of their guys in the indies. Yeah. Yeah. And Lucha. And Lucha. Yeah, which I, it's, I'm fine with that part. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's I'll, I almost want to go back and watch it now because, like, I see Sammy Callahan ripping off Pentagon's mask in a cage. I'm like, oh, that's really great. Mm-hmm. But yeah. but it's not because it's TNA. It's because it's Lucha Guys. And it's definitely yeah, – you, you can tell the new the new TNA is a very studio show, a much, much smaller crowd than even what you saw in the Impact Zone in Universal Studios. I, I was watching uh, the Jeff Hardy uh, uh, against uh, uh, Ken Anderson 
against all odds ladder match from the Hogan era uh, that was there with uh, with Larry that, that he's never watched TNA, especially that that age of TNA. And he's just like, this just feels very small. And I'm like, yeah, dude, and this is a pay-per-view you paid like 30 bucks for. Mm-hmm. I saw one of their pay-per-views at a theater at South Hills Village. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't remember which one it was. I Slam anniversary, maybe. I saw a lockdown at Cinemark in Robinson, yeah. and it didn't work. It was the the actual feed broke twenty minutes before the end of the show. Yeah, and people just sat there yelling stuff at the screen, which was probably better than the show. Yeah, yeah. It was just like I might as well have like pirated this at home, which yeah. Um, at the time, I, I mean, think was, a lot of us were doing. It was kind of cool that. It just seems like anytime they got a foothold, like they would get a guy that you would think that this is a guy that's going to get to, like they got Christian and it's like, Oh cool. People know him. Maybe they'll get it together and get to the next level. And yeah, he's not like a huge name, but he was on TV for a long time. Mm-hmm. And then they had Sting, and then they have all these guys. And it's like, this is the thing gets them to the next level. And each time they would get there, they would figure out a way. It's like, it blows my mind because the, the times that TNA works, I'm trying not to be, Super negative. Like the Samoa Joe um, angle series is awesome. So it was like very close to an MMA kind of feud and it was different than anything in American rings. And it was just cool. And then they had the X division, which again was different than anything happening. They had access to new Japan. They had Tokyo dome matches. They had all these things that now are, if you think about the stuff that it influences wrestling now, and that is big within hardcore wrestling now, or the smart fans that they love now, TNA had done all these things 10 years ago. But they had created a cachet that people hated them. That there's no way that you could get behind their product. It, it's kind of the the uh, you see this with technology a lot. Like uh, you know, uh, you can look at you know Movie Pass these days. If we if we cross over to our tech show, Movie Pass is probably not going to make a lot of money and do well. But it's changed the industry, right? Yeah. It, like it, they could fall out, and run out of money next week, according to news that came out this week, right? Uh, but already, that's the way you go to movies. And can go to movies with these other plans that have come up in response. Um, those people will make money and and do well. You be your WWEs, be your Ring of Honors, be everything else from the, that evolution, right? Mm-hmm. But the first one doesn't. <clears throat> Loses money, gets sold to somebody in Canada. It's just funny that TNA has never had, it's never really been cool. Yeah, which is what's funny. I, I, I guess the X Division was, and like I. I would counter that 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 angle Samoa Joe X division like like right when it started though right uh, when it started no 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 no, no, no. not right when, where when it, it, we're not right no. where it started because it was it was kind of questionable at the beginning but once well, it was only questionable because of Kurt's health no no, no. okay oh, oh you're talking when, about right when, when it started with Kurt Angle yes okay yes when when Kurt Angle first came in and Samoa Joe headbutted him in the face yeah. That instantly became cool. Yeah. But then they drove it into the ground. But even they had great matches, but they drove it into the ground. The attitude towards TNA when we started this show in 2006 was TNA was the next coming of something cool, something different, something that's not WWE. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was. Because they were. And they delivered for probably about two years before you know we started getting into this Hulk Hogan, like, what the hell are we doing, guys? Or, um, uh, okay. So you say two years. Wait, when did the Hogan well, stuff happen? Uh, I'm, I'm just, 2010. 2010? Yeah. The only TNA pay-per-view I've ever been to was Victory Road in 2007. Yes. Do, do you want to hear the card? Oh, oh, wait. Is is that where the, the Outsiders came back? And uh, Diamond Dallas Page? And... No, 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 no. It's not, it's not that bad. Um, I mean, they definitely suffered from the WCW old guys on top, but the mid-card is amazing. The, uh, during a lot of that time. Um, the main event for this show that I was at was Kurt Angle, who was the world champion, and Samoa Joe, who was the X Division champion, versus Team 3D, who were the tag team champions with all the belts on the line. Okay, that's when it got weird. That's definitely when it <laughs> yep. got weird. So that's about a year. Yeah. That's about a year. I mean, we had... Th- there were some bright spots, I guess. There, there's an Ultimate X Gauntlet, which was, which I remember being awesome. Mm-hmm. Had like Daniels, Lethal, Puma, Homicide, Sanjay Dutt, P.D. Williams, Shark Boy, Elix Skipper, Kaz, and Sentry. And that's where they reformed um, Triple X. But then you had the, <laughs> the the New Age Outlaws, 
Voodoo, against the Bashams. Voodoo Kin Mafia, the VKM. Voodoo Kin Mafia. Yeah, mm-hmm. Voodoo Kin Mafia with Roxy Laveau versus Basham and Damage. Whatever happened to Roxy? That's a good question. I like Roxy. I'm going to look it up. You guys keep going. I'm going to see. But yeah, yeah, James Storm against Rhino. And yet, the Morse Machine Guns against Jerry, L- Jerry Lynn and Bob Backlund. So, oh, TNA. Bob Backlund. Oh, do you remember Bob Backlund yeah, just wandering right. Universal Studios being crazy? Um, he yelled at us. <laughs> he yelled at us. He, like, we were online to get into the impact zone. He hopped up on one of the large wooden barricades and just started screaming at all of us for being in line. <laughs> It was very odd. I forgot the uh, Dups were there too, where they did the uh, the Dup Cup with the Dup rules. Oh yeah, it's really like it's funny because nobody learned anything from WCW. Like every one of these guys that was in WCW, yep. almost or had a role. Like for example, there was Randy Savage almost wrestled in TNA too, which is crazy. It was going to be him, Jeff Hardy, and AJ Styles against Jarrett Nash and Hall. Well, that was his last appearance, though, right? Yeah, then he was kidnapped in the middle of the show. Came back, punched Jarrett in the face, and then he was never seen again. TNA did a lot of kidnappings. Yeah. Like, we still don't know who those ninjas were that kidnapped Samoa Joe and threw him in the trunk. The Nation of Violence. <laughs> yeah, whoever the fuck they were. <laughs> also, around that time, Joe had a machete and claimed that he... Remember, he came with a bloody machete and said he uh-huh. killed Scott Steiner? Yep, yep. And uh, he had the weird markings on his face that looked like a Mike Tyson tattoo. That's right. Also, you know, maybe uh, WWE doesn't need all that Samoa Joe footage. <laughs> maybe they well, don't. here's another one I forgot about. They did a big gimmick where they did a dream match between AJ Styles and, and Tanahashi from New Japan. And uh, Shannon Moore interfered at the finish to spoil it. They started a feud between Shannon Moore and AJ. And AJ, being, even being the top guy, put on put over Shannon Moore. And then TNA didn't sign him to a contract, so WWE signed him back. And that's when he ended up being on ECW. The Prince of Punk. Wow. Oh, my God. I don't even remember A. Tanahashi being in TNA. Mm-hmm. But, oh, wow. That's that's bad. Also, Don West being a heel is another oh, dream. Oh, that was not – that was never – that was I, not a good I love him selling stuff, though. Um, oh. So, uh, Roxy Laveau, just enough, they did retire in 2013 in order to concentrate on her fitness career and company. Oh, good for her. There you go. A retirement match was promoted by Lucky Pro Wrestling on December 6th in Clinton, Massachusetts. Do you guys remember the other one? Here's another crazy TNA moment that I forgot about. In 2011, they did all those vignettes in the Fed about the return of The Undertaker. And there were all the rumors that Sting had signed and they were going to do the big match. So TNA made videos just like them for Sting. Yes, yeah, they're and here. Everybody was up. Oh, you they're know. here. Oh. What, wasn't that wasn't that the, the whole thing that they're here? Oh, they're here and... People kept coming up with a sign that said they're here and all that. And and the best thing, and I remember this distinctly because they used the clip in their intro package. There was one asshole at the impact zone who had a sign that said they're here, but he spelled there T H E I R. Like if that and TNA used that like for months. And I'm like, if that doesn't tell you the quality, the the quality control of TNA product at the time, nothing will. So who who was they? It was like Jeff Hardy and Jeff Jarrett, right? <clears throat> I think so. Yeah, it was another one that I like tried to knock out of my mind. Here's another great one that I did. They did a, when Dixie Carter got her own action figure. <laughs> they did a contest where they showed on TV. Photos of oh. fans, fans that sent in. And okay. someone had one at the NXT show, and another one had a Vince doll standing on her head. <laughs> All right. So they was Fortune. Oh. Oh, oh man. Oh, I, I got to look up who Fortune was at the end. I know AJ was in it because they used to yeah. ice Ric Flair every week. Yeah. Seagram's ice Ric Flair, and he would have to kneel down and drink it. And I just remember thinking, this is the all-time worst thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Okay, so the members of Fortune, it, it looks like the initial ones were Flair, AJ, Kaz, uh, and then Beer Money. Yeah. And then eventually they got Douglas Williams, Matt Morgan, Rob Terry, and Daniels in it. 
On a recent podcast uh, uh, where SoCal Uncensored was on uh, Edge and Christian podcast, I remember Kaz just 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 talked about how basically his role in TNA was guy that breaks up fights in fortune. Yeah, <laughs> for the longest yeah. time, pretty much. And then they, <laughs> some read on Wikipedia that they feud with. Remember EV two point oh. Oh yeah, the ECW guys because balls. Yeah, are... and the the only reason they had the only reason they were called EV 2.0 was because you can chant it and it sounds like ECW, because the Impact Zone kept chanting ECW, but they weren't allowed to let's, do. It. Let's go into that. This is this is this goes into TNA's nostalgic phase for things that were not TNA. Um, uh, you know, obviously with the Bischoff and Hogan era, but also what was al- already sounded like a porn title, Hard Justice, one year became Hardcore Justice, and mm-hmm. which was basically TNA's one night stand for ECW. Yeah, which I remember being pretty decent. Well, it, it was no uh, one man, the one night stand, but I remember it being my, uh, pretty decent. I'm looking up the matches to see. I was just checking it myself. <laughs> let's see, let's see if you're right, Sorg. What year uh, was that? Uh, 2010. I, yeah, 2010 I, was the one. I, it was headlined oh, by yeah. Rob Van Dam oh, and Sabu. Sa- Sabu. Sabu. Um, I I I feel like Barbed Wire this was is, involved at some this point. This is basically an ECW show. Yeah. Oh yeah. It, it's. You know what? Wasn't this? Didn't this happen right after? Um, the um the first one night stand. Yeah, they did the uh one. They did the um. It was close to there, but then they also did <coughs> the whole effing show that free pay per view. That remember when they were doing the the small like pay per views that were only for Direct TV. Oh, yeah, like like the precursor of the one night stands or something. Yeah, that's where they did uh, Van Dam against Abyss with Eric Bischoff as guest referee, hmm. and Jesse Neal defeated Sam Shaw in the main event. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> just, just a quick rundown. We also had Tommy Dreamer and Raven because we hadn't seen that enough over the years. Team 3D and Axel Rotten and Cajones. Is that Balls Mahoney? That's Balls that Mahoney. Okay. Balls Mahoney because they couldn't call him Balls because he had been WWE at that point. Oh, uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Cajones. Uh, Rhino and Al Snow. Oh, well, Rhino hey, versus hey. Al Snow and Brother Runt, which was Spike Dudley. The three Ray S- dance. Stevie Richards against PJ Polacco, one uh, just incredible. Uh, C.W. Anderson against to- Two School Cold Scorpio. The FBI in this iteration: Guido, Tony, Tony Luke, like Marma to- Luke, um, I believe. Tony Mama Luke, but they yeah. called him Tony Luke because of Philly, because of cheesesteaks. Oh, and Tracy Smothers. <laughs> Against Kid Cash, Johnny Swinger, and Simon Diamond. Yeah, so this is just an ECW. Show. Yeah, yeah, but they're just like, hey, let's let's just do this, and without any of the name. And and Mick Foley was also involved with this. Uh, oh, he was a special guest referee for Dreamer and Raven. So mm-hmm. yeah, uh, again, I I remember this coming off for the time. I'm afraid as all hell to go back and watch it now, but mm-hmm. uh, but it was kind of like, a, a, oh hey, I think I'm going to watch this one. They you did know. keep the name Hardcore Justice for, like, the preceding years. Yeah. But even just looking at the next year's Hardcore Justice, it looks like, first of all, it doesn't look like there's a hardcore match on the show. Oh, so it's kind of like <laughs> Extreme <laughs> Rules now. Yeah, yeah, but, like, there isn't even, like, I don't see a stipulation match. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> they just nope. matches. Like, it's just matches. Like, oh, wow. There's, I forgot about Sam Shaw, so I was reading about him. I love During, Sam Shaw. He looked like the lead singer of Deaf Heaven, which if anybody, he looks exactly like him. And he wears gloves just like him, which I thought couldn't be an accident. But remember when he was in love with Christy Hem and she came back to his house and he yeah. had that special poster room of her? Uh-huh. They gave I, him I, a ton of TV time. This the is- Sam Shaw gimmick was probably one of my... Besides EC3, it was probably my last favorite thing in TNA. I remember you being super excited on Midweek War about it. Yeah, Sam Shaw, because it was, there was thought being put into it. There was thought being put into it. There was a lot of writing. You could tell there was writing happening with that character. Like, I don't know if it was the guy himself doing all the input. It probably was, because that's like most of, most of the stuff that worked in TNA was because of, the people directly involved in the angle. 
Is this um? A, did this guy end up doing anything else outside of this? He's, no, he, he was carted off by Miss Anderson. But but he, he did he didn't, some indies and that's it. The, like he didn't get a spot with Ring of Honor or anything else. No, he's worked for Vintage Wrestling and he's worked for a group called TNT GFW, which I've never heard of. Hey, cool. Throttle, of per, in full throttle pro wrestling. Okay, uh, he's worked that, but nothing. His finisher was the Irish Car Bomb, which is pretty funny. Mm-hmm. I mean, in the ring, he was he was fine. Like yes. he, he didn't light the world on fire in the ring, but his character was amazing. He was a gut check uh, winner too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, there's another thing. So, Rockstar Spud won the British Boot Camp. Yeah, I watched every episode of it. I I, I hear it's amazing. It's actually one of the better things they did. Mm-hmm. But did anybody really come out of gut checks? I remember there was. A, I'm looking up right now. Um, because there was one year was a pretty big debacle. We had facade on because he was going to be a part of it. Um, like the where they were doing the voting and they have a big online voting, but then they realized that the voting was entirely broken and yes. completely kiboshed the entire thing, well, re- rebooted it. It didn't make sense, and it just turned into a, a just a online you know teardown for them. Well, that's how John Bowen got into wrestling. Uh, used to be in IWC. Yeah, and he's a former roommate of mine. Um, but he's uh, he did a gut check at one of the I think the Arnold Classic. Mm-hmm. And he won training for it. And then, like, he had a fight to get onto TV. Like, he, he was under contract, and they'd never use him. He just worked for them. He worked Del Rio when Del Rio was there hmm. last year. And then he did his war child gimmick there a couple times. Yeah. And then but he said, like, he's like, I should have never won that contest because I never got to get used anywhere. <laughs> and then he, <laughs> okay. went, he was in Deep South for a while, too, for the Fed. And I think he's training in Canada now, isn't he? Yeah. 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 So Want to hear here. some of the people that were in Gut Check just over the years? Okay. Joey Ryan. Mm-hmm. Wow. Taylor Hendricks. Wow. Well, she got used. I, okay, now, yeah. she's one that they brought up and used a bit, and she had a pretty good uh, deal She was up on there. TNA? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they did Joey Ryan. They did the angle where he pissed off Taz with his promo. Yeah. And that, that was because originally they were going to try to do. That was him. Yeah, yeah, they were trying to do shoot versions of letting the talent pit. I can't remember how it worked, but Flair went into business for himself. So he liked somebody's promo more. So he said, I'll let that kid go. And they weren't no, supposed to it let was, him go. Um, it was Pritchard, not Flair. Okay. But it was like it all got screwed up. And uh, then the, at that point, they're like, you know what? Let's just work this. And they did Taz and Joey Ryan. And then the angle never ended up really happening. And he yeah, was. Um, Taz couldn't work. And he was a little bit of the Joey Ryan you see now, like not as uh, dirty looking. Uh, he had from the, the lollipop gimmick and some of okay. the other stuff. Um, all right, so some of the other people. Brian Cage. Who? Who? Brian Cage. <laughs> he he wasn't a machine back then, I don't believe. No, no, pre-machine Brian Cage. Yeah. Uh, he's had some awesome matches in Noah, by the yeah. way. You guys haven't seen him. He's, he's great. Oh, well, he's in Lucha, too. He's Yeah. He's awesome in Lucha. Um, Eva Lise was on there. Okay. Ivelisse, um, let's see. And uh, wait, isn't Ivelisse also a t- a tough enough contestant? Yes. So yeah, she Ivelisse, she, Ivelisse she basically enough. did the rounds of real wrestling reality TV. Yeah. Um. So Martin Stone, who is now Danny Burch in NXT. Um. Mm-hmm. Sean Ricker, who you might know as Eli Drake. Hmm. Which is good because they actually used him, but apparently in 2015, Dalton Castle. Yeah. Was he in gut check? He beat DJ Z in his match. Yeah. I'm looking at a, uh, a Brian Cage match from TNA 2013. I'm afraid to put footage on here because they used to give us really bad takedown notices all the time in the past, and I don't know if the new company is like that I- anymore. Um, but, man, Brian Cage is like half a Brian Cage. Uh-huh. <laughs> from the looks yeah. of it. <laughs> Christian oh, York was a gut check guy, too. Yeah. I was, I was after he was in. Yeah. Because I remember he came back and he was like, Twice as big as he was when he worked for Steel City. Yeah, yeah. He he wrestled uh, Zima too. He wrestled mm-hmm. DJZ. And how can I forget my favorite TNA wrestler, Wes Briscoe? Oh, I was... <laughs> <laughs> and guess who Wes Briscoe wrestled for his gut check? I know, but I'm, I'll let you tell because I'm so excited about it. <laughs> Sorg, do you have a guess? Wait, Wes Briscoe was it? Yeah, p- please guess. I take it back. Wes Briscoe is not my least favorite TNI guy ever. The guy he wrestled is my least favorite ever. <laughs> oh, then it's, um, I don't know, Robbie E or something? 
No, no. Robbie E's amazing. Yes. Robbie E's sour compared to this person. <laughs> <laughs> That's Sword. hilarious. And nothing against Robbie E on that one. Because I think he's no, really awesome. Robbie, no. Sword. It's Garrett Bischoff. <laughs> You know, I was going to say that, but I couldn't remember his first name. <laughs> remember when Garrett Bischoff joined Aces and Eights? Yeah. And, and, and nobody cared. And then also, uh, they did the angle where he fought his dad. Anyone who anyone who has their last name tattooed on them, you, you, don't, make, you don't make well life choices. No. He had a little pocket above his heart. So uh-huh. like, he, like, he, like he was working in a gas station all the yeah, time. It was like Bischoff <laughs> in, the Ford, in the Ford script. I'm like, oh. Yeah. That's just that's not a good life choice that's, at all. That's a complicated design. Wow. Yeah, and I like when when uh, Wes Briscoe came in. They're like, he's a competitive wakeboarder. I'm like, well, the skills that he <laughs> learned from wakeboarding will come in getting from your knees up to standing. That does come in handy in wrestling. Let me tell you that much. <laughs> oh, that's As a that, referee. It might. That, that that that's a whole week in training class, right? Right, Joe. Yeah, yeah. That's that's all I did. That's all I did when I first started training that, was kneel down, stand up. No, kneel down. It's just That's, like being in Catholic church. It's those exactly. It's those kind of skills that got Elias on Raw, right? I don't. Mm-hmm. I think he was much better than that. But, yeah. <laughs> I hope. I wish I trained Garrett Bischoff. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I like seriously. I watched all that. Why? Like I don't know. Like there was nothing that really stopped me from watching TNA. I tried to point out like. When did I stop? Because I made it through all that Aces and Eight stuff. Yeah. All of it. I made it through Bully Ray marrying Hogan's daughter. It, the greatest oh, thing man. about that era is anytime you're like, you know what would make this is if she actually was the heel. And like, it's I, the was exact opposite thing. Oh, I was hoping for that. I was hoping for that the whole time. Like if she's yeah. she's like an a, a abusive uh, girlfriend or something. Yeah. Well, you, you well know, not which, even not even that. Like like she pulled the Stephanie McMahon. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. Like she was in on from the beginning to get her dad out of the business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it seemed like any time to the T- the other trick of TNA is there was a whole run where no tag team ever got along. Like as soon as you got put in a tag team <laughs> with someone, you started hating them, and then they would fight the whole time. And it was like nobody got along. The faces were continually the dumbest. And then mm-hmm. you had that whole angle where um, uh, Val Venus was trying to get a job. It hacks. So was it him? Was it Val Venus who the job and was cleaning the toilets? Yeah, I think it was. No. Or was that? Who was no. that? That was. I should really look at Oh, up. God. It was on the one of the first Hogan ones. Was it? I don't think it was Val Venus. Oh, I can't remember who it was. It, it's not. Is it really worth me looking up? Was it? No, it wasn't Mike Bennett. EC3 made Mike Bennett clean toilets. I remember that. Yeah. Um. Oh, jeez. By the way, uh, go back to gut check for a, just a, just a slight moment. Thank you for Alex Miller out there, uh, out, out in California for pointing out Rockstar Spud was over Marty Skrull, the villain. Yeah. And I, and I found a match. <laughs> found an amazing match where Marty Skrull and Mister Spectacular are in a six-person tag with uh, uh, I don't know, the 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 Blossom Twins and Gail Kim and Tara, Victoria. Ooh. It's, it's it's interesting, and it's when um is it is that um uh, ECW's Tiffany, a GM that is the the referee for these, perhaps. Um, yes. I, for, I forget what her name is in TNA. Oh oh, Tara Damn Taren it. Taren Taren Terrell Taren Terrell. 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 Thank you. Taren yeah. Terrell. Yeah, yeah, this is fascinating. There's also um. The uh, uh, the um, janitor, Eric Bischoff, made him clean up the toilets, and that's when he got jumped by uh, Val Venus. Okay, yeah, because I was gonna say I was looking up Val Venus, and he he wasn't an adult film star anymore in TNA. He was an adult film Poorly producer. Too. He was a producer. And he ambushed uh, Jeff in the men's room, and they fought into a handicap stuff. <laughs> the finish was him kicking the door onto Jeff Jarrett's shoulder. And then pinning him. <laughs> oh, jeez. There's some really rough memories. Anything with Ken Anderson is a bad memory. He's one I, of my least favorite wrestlers ever. He, really? How can we, you make Mike Sanders more shitty? Call him Ken Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. He's below average Ken Anderson. Oh, he's, man. Well, 
my favorite thing of all time is when they did the angle where uh, he cocked off to Regal on the one fetch, and Regal just punched him in the face, and the crowd went like bonkers. And it was like it wasn't even like a face heel moment. It was just like people just don't like him. This well, is after they were going to make him be Vince's stepson. Remember that big rumored angle? Well, yeah, and he won the money in the bank, too. Yeah. He won the money in the bank. He was going to be Vince's bastard son. He was going to win the title, and it was going to be a whole thing. And then didn't he get popped for steroids? Something, yeah. It was either that or I, I think he had recently injured Orton in the match, and I think that may have contributed to it. But, uh, man, I, I, you know, I, I've always been kind of a slight fan of Mr. Anderson, actually. Uh, you're, you were a fan of Mr. Kennedy. Yeah. His, his Mr. Anderson stuff was not good. You don't like the yeah. assholes? No. no. No? Especially when, you, when your catchphrase is something that you have to bleep on TV, mm -hmm. you probably should use a different catchphrase. Yeah, it works live. I don't like Eric Young either, but people always get mad when I say that. Nah, I, I like Eric Young. Yeah. I like Eric Young. I can't help it. His matches were really hard for me to watch. But I think at that point, anything in TNA, I'm going to like paint with a very broad brush. Uh, Eric Young, I'll give Eric Young this, though. They gave him so much dog shit to work with in TNA, and he did his best with everything. Mm -hmm. the weird, here's maybe why I didn't like because they did that whole angle where he pal drove somebody when world elite formed got to TNA. <laughs> the world elite <laughs> wait 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 wait. roll back roll back what was world elite <laughs> it was all the non-american tna wrestlers yeah. what Doug williams yeah oh my god tna world elite oh i'm gonna i'm gonna get a yeah. list of everyone world elite uh and, er eric young doug williams magnus kiyoshi homicide sheik abdul bashir rob terry and kevin nash <laughs> yep they did the whole thing where uh, Mike Tanay did that whole promo about how there's an unspoken rule in wrestling that you're not allowed to use the pile driver. Meanwhile, AJ used pretty much a pile driver for his finisher. Yeah. You know, a variation of it for his entire TNA. And he's like, he's like, you know, and everybody looks out for each other and nobody does a pile driver. And Eric Young went into business for himself. So he's like a shoot angle with Eric Young pile driving somebody. And that was the whole angle from then on out. And Eric Young was like going to be the top heel. And I just remember watching it and I was like, yeah, but. You know, they did have cool, cool ring jack. They had windbreakers they wore to the ring that said "World Elite." <laughs> oh, that bar, uh, that that merchandising in TNA, something uh, else. Well, I think I think I did discuss last time that I have a Hermie Sandler uh, signed picture. Yes, and we're we're still very jealous. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's only because of Farnsworth uh, that I have it here. I have a list of TNA teams and stables. Maybe this will help. Oh boy! Oh, oh no! This is gonna, this is gonna be. Like you know an what? Just just trip. throw a couple out there for good for good measure. Three Live Crew. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Getting rowdy. Uh, the addiction. Yep. Yeah. Well, I mean, that still kind of exists today. Yeah, right? they they really just rolled over to Ring that's of Honor. That's basically SoCal Uncensored. Yeah. The Angle Alliance. Ooh. Who's in that one? It was a heel stable led by Kurt Angle, Kurt okay. Angle, Christian Cage. AJ Styles, Tomko, Tom Karen Angle, Robert Roode, Miss Brooks, and Jeremy Borash. <laughs> Wait, Jeremy <laughs> Borash was, was a heel? Why was yeah. Borash in the stable? That's so weird. Oh, oh God, that's that's odd. That's the really beatdown odd. clan. Oh, that that was one of the most uncomfortable stables I remember. Let me see who's in the beat down. Oh, hold on, hold on. Let me see if I can remember. I think I remember. Okay. I know. Was it MVP? A MVP. Yeah. He's the leader. Low key. Yes. Uh, homicide. Yep. And oh, oh, oh man, oh this is gonna bug Kenny, me. Is Kenny King. Kenny King. Yes. Bobby king Lashley. Night. Yep. Uh, Hom uh, Hernandez and Samoa Joe were all in. Yeah. Him. It's my dream because remember in the old Fed game where MVP started his own country in that one angle? <laughs> and, you had like, and it all leads to you having a flag match between you and MVP to win his flag of his uh -huh. MVP. MVP Ania is the name of his country. He, he wanted to make Uganda a thing before the Black Panther movie. My brother has no idea who MVP is, but only plays the video game. So every time he would see him wrestling, he'd be like, that's a guy that has his own country. And I'm like, that never happened. That was only in the video game. And he goes, no, he has his own country. I saw it. 
<laughs> it's canon. It's canon. Uh, Alex Miller is also saying that he bought a piece of the table that Dixie Carter went through. Oh, God. Why would you do that? <laughs> I, hmm? Well, he's a Capitals fan, so he doesn't make good decisions. Whoa, anyway. whoa, ah! whoa, whoa. And he is bringing up, and I don't know if we brought, talked about last time, Joker Sting. I love oh, Joker this, Sting. Oh, I loved boy. it. I love Joker Sting. I loved it. I don't I care what anyone says. Era. It's just I, rough. Yeah, I don't care what anyone says. I still think that's the best version of this thing. Wow, really? Yeah. Well, I, I didn't grow up watching WCW. Okay. Oh, okay. So, so I, wait. So, so did... I never got to see Surfer Sting in his prime. I only got to see it as a disillusioned teenager. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, Crow Sting. Crow Sting. Oh no. Well, yeah. I basically saw Surfer Sting when I was Crow Sting. Like, uh, everything sucks. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but I loved Joker Sting because. It looked like the first time in TNA he was actually having fun. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, think, I, I think that's why I gravitate. I'm with that because he was still like, you know, crow sting that's not moody crow sting when he popped up in TNA. And I'm watching, I'm watching, um, geez, who was he fighting? He won a belt uh, in whatever clip I was watching. And just his eyes just looked like he didn't give a crap. Yeah. At that point. Mm-hmm. I'll give you that. So. Like he, like you could see every time there's a slam anniversary and Sting is in the main event, he's like, "I should be wrestling Undertaker. <laughs> I should be wrestling Undertaker." But every year his why am I laying this weight on? But what was that again? Every year his contract would come up and he'd be like, "This is my last year," and then they'd match what he'd want. It's mm-hmm. kind of like me when I don't want to do certain jobs. Sorry, I don't know if you do this in your freelance life, where I'll get a job sometimes and I'll be like, "I really don't want to work on this." So I like give an exorbitant figure that I'm like, there's no way they'll match this. Yep. And then they come back with more, and I'm like, <laughs> that sounds accurate. I have not been lucky like, enough to have that experience. Uh, um, it's happened a few times. I mean, I not do as much as I would like. I just give a reasonable figure in pro wrestling, and that usually makes people go away. So uh, exact. Well, same way. Yeah, same thing. Yeah, that, that's basically where that's at. Yeah. I'm gonna my least favorite stable in TNA is. Uh, S-E-X. Sports oh, and Entertainment Extreme. That was led by Mr. Wrestling 3. Who like turned out to be Vince Russo. Oh. Uh-huh. Yeah. How many members of 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 S-E-X can you name? Because I'm shocked wait, that I wait, can name this wait, many. Wait, wait, wait. I'm thinking uh, Elix, Elix Skilper, right? Uh, no. Oh, yes. No. He, yes. Triple X yeah. was part of it, yes. Yeah. Um, oh, wait. He was Triple X. Oh, wait. Oh, C- did I'm not CM sure. Punk was, CM Punk was in it, right? No, he was not. I thought CM Punk was in sports. I'm, I'm confusing my groups. I'm sorry. Uh, Disco Inferno. Disco, oh, jeez. Desire. Desire. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Disgraceland. What? Who Who oh. was uh, Luther Biggs? Luther <laughs> Reigns. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. okay. By, by the way, these uh, these are the these is back when the shows came from the Nashville Fairgrounds, right? Yes. So I and mean, they there's... had their own separate SEX yeah. locker room that AJ ripped up with a chainsaw. <laughs> what? Yeah. David Flair. BG James. Mm-hmm. Ashley Hudson. Brian Lawler. God. Raven. Chris Sabin. Mike Sanders. Uh. Sonny Siaki. Jeez. Eric Watts, David Young, and Miss Hollywood, as well as Julio De Niro and Alexis Lurie. And, uh, Alexis Lurie, oh my God. And Don and Ron Harris were their security. They oh, also cool. had Larry Zabisco in the group. Jeez, I love that I just searched AJ Styles' chainsaw and it completely went right to this video. <laughs> I'm putting this in the chat room for you guys. Oh my God. I love this. So this is so I I've I've been just recently throwing up old like WCW Saturday nights and Thunder the last two days in the background while I work, um, yeah. and usually even just listening to other podcasts, right? And, and just like those little nuggets that pop up, I'm like I can't believe they did this. I can't believe there's a thing and I never knew about it. Like that's where I'm at with TNA now. Like like popping up little things like this where it's like they did what now and and it completely exists out there. Like like there needs to be like. A TNA hidden gems that's all the weird little shitty stuff like AJ Styles with a chainsaw, right? Uh, I like the, the host on WWE Network, like the worst of TNA. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, would, I mean, you, would you believe? Would you believe Scott Snyder once got on a pogo stick during a hardcore match? <laughs> <laughs> that could be like a new version of the WWE list that they do. 
or, or countdown or something like that or because i mean just having like because you have all those guys you can sit christian and 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 angle and help bring in sting uh aj samoa joe uh who else is in there from that from that era you know, like like t- just those guys alone and anybody else that had, had a cup of coffee over there like road dog uh billy gunn uh uh r-truth and just talk about the weird crap while they were there on tna like, who would believe that shark boy and new jack would be a tag team <laughs> <laughs> or or you could have or you could just get Shark Boy and have him uh uh confront Stone Cold in his uh Shark Boy three sixteen gimmick. You That's remember? when I knew TNA was the worst and like like they're just doing a Stone Cold gimmick on Shark Boy. I'm like Yeah. Or G or G Lethal doing the Macho Man gimmick or AJ Styles doing uh Ric Flair, you know, which by the way, roll back that Jay Lethal was like the best Macho Man impression, I think. Like I give him credit for going all into that one. But they had, I mean, TNA from the first week sucked. The first match out was the, the dicks. Yeah. And they had guys yeah. dressed like giant penises in the first match. Setting the mm-hmm. tone. Setting the tone. Yeah. And then and, one week they made a big deal that Vader was coming and he had on a velour track suit. Yeah, it was it was not. He looked better on Boy Meets World. It's like most of the people that showed up for the initial TNA didn't they didn't tell them that this wasn't just an indie show. I know. <laughs> right? Like, hey guys, we're on pay per view. Or like, yeah, sure you're our kid. Um and the kid is Jeff Jarrett. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is like, there's stuff i love then though because like i love the new church and malice and mm-hmm. all that stuff like th- they had good matches with america's most wanted and i like shamrock being there and like you get to see ken shamrock and sabu wrestle i mean when are you gonna see that mm-hmm. but, I mean, aj styles is already like a dual champion five weeks into their show wow. yeah like that doesn't inspire a lot of confidence <laughs> That this that this is gonna be in it for the long haul. Right guy, wrong wrong timing, right? Weren't they doing rounds at one point too, and they were on Sports Channel, Fox Sports? Yeah, that was yeah when they moved to Fox Sports. Like it was, that was when I first saw TNA. When it, it was on, it Fox was Sports. it was odd because they would have a cl- running clock for each of the matches, but also like all the crawlers for the other sports were going at the same time. Like they wanted it to look like all the rest of the sports programming. I think that was like at least an interesting idea of like what would a real sports pro wrestling look like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean but, it's not like Fox will ever go back to running wrestling shows. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I'm just I don't want TNA to go out of business. People are always like you like hate them so much. I'm like I yeah, but it's just so weird now that like they're outside of New Japan, which is still a, as much as people love it, a very niche product. Mm-hmm. Um, there's really nothing else to watch. Like there is a homogenized style of what WWE style is and anything that breaks the mold of it, even NXT at some small level is not going to succeed for any long amount of time. Like it's like, I always talk about wrestling being so simple and like, how can you screw it up? It's like, if you see like Velvet Dreams gimmick works really well in NXT and it seems like a gimmick you could bring to the big show. And when he goes there, they're not going to have him do it. No. You know what I mean? Like they're going to figure out, they'll put him in a tag. Well, I mean, figure something the, else for him. The difference is that there's two different creative teams running NXT and running the main roster. Well, and even what we were talking about on the most recent Mayhem show about uh, Mark Spann was in here. And we were talking about how Raw is not a wrestling show, right? Um, or I think with the 83 weeks thing, we we're talking about like this is not a wrestling show. This is a TV show, right? This is a different audience. So uh, versus I think Impact still tries to be a wrestling show. Ring of Honor still tries yeah, to be but, a wrestling show. But there are ways to be not a wrestling show and still be really damn entertaining. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Lucha Underground. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like if Lucha Underground had, like, some billionaire just came in and said, you know what, I'm just going to finance this thing. You throw as much money at it as you want. Mm-hmm. Lucha Underground, I think, could be, like, raw in the ratings. If they're on, like, a network that you didn't have to go to Sling TV to get, basically. Yeah. It's a really cool show too. Like it looks different than anything else out yeah. there. And they're and but, even this season they're on a shoestring budget and it doesn't look like much has changed. No. I think the cool thing about it too is that they've done a really good job of the stuff that doesn't work in Lucha to American audiences. Like the weirder selling and some of the spots that if you watch a, a straight Lucha match, it's kinda hard to translate. Mm-hmm. They've done a really good job of getting past that with the, the things that, and I love Lucha, so but I also know that it's like there's stuff in it that just doesn't make sense. Absolutely. 
the tournament well, and, to Western and plus, Wales. And plus, and they edit it too. Like, yeah. Like, like I like I mean, seeing Lucha live. Like I got to see the Lucha vs Impact show, and it was great live. But you can tell like some of the matches are chopped down a little bit. But it's still, it's a cohesive message. Like, mm-hmm. and there's no like, like when my least favorite thing that Raw does is you'll have the entrances to the match, and then as soon as the bell rings, two minutes, then it's a commercial. Yeah, and you, and you miss half the match. Like. Lucha Underground doesn't do that because they don't have to. They're pre-produced. Right, right. nice package but, thing. Yeah, that's what I understand because SmackDown is pre-produced and the blown spots still get on it and screw ups still get on it. Well, not do you, you mean you mean before they they went live? Yeah, yeah. Boy, because everything's live to tape and they don't. If it's not egregious, they're not going to go back and clean it up, right? That's yeah. why ECW worked so well because there were if you went to an ECW taping and saw the matches, you knew that you'd maybe get to see two hours of TV come out of that four hour tape mm-hmm. yeah. because probably was really smart. Of, here's the stuff that doesn't work. And here's matches that we shouldn't show. So he basically just shot a bunch of stuff and Frankenstein it together to, to the, the, the program, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, uh, interesting. So it's like, Oh, that's why like he followed like the way Japanese matches get cut uh, where it's like show high spots, mm-hmm. show some, some structure of the match and yeah. then show the finish, which is good because then you can cut out anything that's blown or anything that doesn't work. And that's how, like, he made guys look a million times. Like, he made Public Enemy, who were, like, Ted Petty was really talented, and Rocco was good at brawling, but, like, he made them look like better talent than was in WWE at the time. He, 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 made, he made them look like more than just hard, more hardcore nasty boys. Yeah. And he, it's amazing because if you think of the talent he got when he started there, and the people, like, he had guys like Sabu who were going to obviously change wrestling, who's, like, so underrated and like one of my favorite guys ever. Taz was great at playing it. He had guys that were good at playing their gimmicks. He had Taz, Sandman, Dreamer. They were good at playing it. He had Funk as a good guy to build around. But those guys weren't guys that would have got anywhere past openers in WWE shows. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And it's like the fact that he could turn them into something and made stuff work. As much as, and as much as I love Shane, like Shane and ECW versus Shane anywhere else, it's night or day. That's what I was thinking earlier when you guys were talking about TNA, like a deal between TNA and WWE at some point. I remember when Shane left to be on to be Dean Douglas, people were burning WWE shirts in the parking lot and throwing <laughs> them back in the ring. And I'm like, they're paying ECW thousands of dollars a month to be in business. Yeah. Like yeah. every most 90% of smart fans knew that. But these fans had like it was a weird audience that was smart to wrestling, but wasn't smart to the fact that ECW was a WWE product. A lot yeah, of I mean, they, they were smart to wrestling, but not smart to business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I play, and plus, it was also like a closely guarded secret that WWE was giving ECW money because if people have found out about that, like, like that ruins the allure of ECW. Mm-hmm. It, I, like, I kinda, that, like that, it's a renegade promotion. I, the time I figured it out was when Brockus started doing ECW matches because he didn't fit them at all. Yeah. And it wasn't somebody that there was any upside to, yet they were still using him. There had to be a reason that they were using him. Mm-hmm. Well, guys, but, I, I think the next step is to get you guys together to watch a current Impact Wrestling show. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> At some oh, point, Aaron. No. You know, do I get sliced for that? Yeah, there you go. There you go. We'll Actually, watch you know party. what? If, if we do a watch party, that would that could be interesting. There you go. There you go. Like, wait, 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 when is Slammiversary? Uh, it's it's very soon. I actually I think it's before this is going to be officially released. Fuck. So I was gonna say, I mean, we could watch it at some point after. We could. We you could. You could. Uh, I I it think is July twenty second. July twenty second. Wait, that's when I'm out on this weird vacation thing, and this will actually broadcast uh, to our podcasters. I think the the Tuesday after that. So. So, okay, but uh, right. we'll we'll find some some milestone here in the in the coming months, and maybe we'll get you guys together and do uh, some kind of uh, uh, post show or, uh, or or watch party or something of the of the sort. Because I think that's like uh, good to like see how far it's come or how far back it's gone uh, in some cases, I guess. But uh, it's definitely something different. It's not the Impact Wrestling. Yeah, I I think every three years you can look at Impact Wrestling and say this is a completely different program. Yeah, WWE has been remarkably consistent yeah. by comparison. The formula hasn't changed in 15 years all that much. Honestly, that, that's I was trying to think about that before we started this. Is like, when did like Ken Anderson? When was he in WWE? Do you know what I mean? It's it's yeah. hard to put year, years to, 
from 2004 to 2018 yeah. mm-hmm. because of the, the same, sameness of it yep. versus like TNA is a different build. It's in, yep. there's the fairground era. There's the impact zone era. Yep. Awesome. Well, Shirley Doe, where can people find you online or in the Pittsburgh area? You can find me in two places in wrestling mm-hmm. fight society. Um, and you can find me at rise pro wrestling and, uh, we have a show this weekend, but this is airing different times, so this is like very. <laughs> it will already have been released on IndieWrestling.us. Yes, did you ever see the old Mister Show sketch, the pre-taped Colin show? No, I haven't. <laughs> you should watch it, where it's like, please do not call this week about last week's show. The show is being and like every caller is asking the wrong questions, and he just David Cross flips out. And you can find out if you want to know about my non-wrestling stuff, about movies. You can go to b and s about movies.com that's where every day i have a new movie mostly gore and uh italian movies and foreign Dude, movies fascinating i love that was like you were talking about somebody falls off a building three times and i want to know if it was the Wilhelm scream he said no it's italian shocking dark it's it was called terminator 2 uh in in japan really yeah huh. and the poster has arnold on it it what? is actually an, an aliens ripoff not a terminator oh. ripoff and um, it, the team in it is called the Megaforce, not like the movie Megaforce. And they all wear rollerblading equipment. And one dude looks oh, no. just like Edge. I did just, I just found the Terminator 2 poster, like the it's, really bad one. It looks it's like. It's awesome. Oh, I bought geez. it. Severin put it out. And they did a super limited uh, sleeve with the Terminator 2 cover. And it says it's the no, we're going to get sued edition. So they only did 250 <laughs> copies. Um, I didn't get one in time. Yeah, there it is. Shocking Dark. Jeez. It's it's great. Oh, it's, they this, out. Yeah, it's um yeah, three different people fall off buildings with their deaths in it. And like within ten minutes. It's we, the TNA of movies. We need to do we need to do do crazy movie night with Shirley Doe at some point here. Yeah, That's for dude, sure. I would, I'll make thing. you guys watch the baby. <laughs> the baby? It's a movie from nineteen seventy two. It's directed by the same guy who did Conquest of the Planet of the Apes. And it's about a, an adult baby whose mom keeps him in a crib because she wants the money for him. And everybody that meets the baby falls in love with him, even though he can't walk. It's a PG <laughs> movie. Keep this in mind. It is one of the that most popular Sounds like a movies. fetish movie from 2018. Dude, this movie is crazy. Like, it shuts people's brains off. Like, people who have watched it with me are like, I can't get it out of my head how upsetting that movie is. <laughs> all right, all right. I have a question I don't know if I want the answer to. Yeah. Is the baby breastfed? Yes. Yeah, of course he is. He tries, to, okay. he tries to do it with every woman that gives in to him. Of, of and course. His, his sisters come in while he is trying to breastfeed with the uh, this babysitter. And keep in mind, he's 30. And um, he they beat the hell out of the girl and then uh, kill her in front of him. Oh, It's great. And they throw oh, into a wow. circle. Yeah, it's, it's a really... As, as one does. As one it's does. a really good... It's got a great shock ending. Um, it's got a great poster. It's coming out... Uh, Shout Factory, no, Arrow is actually putting a new copy of it out in August. And my dream was the, my dream someday is to be on the commentary tracks for DVDs. One, and like, one, one movie I'd highly recommend you you look for if you can find it. It's called The Paperboy. Oh, yes. The, the Canadian, Canadian movie? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we did it on our, on our podcast. It's, it's kind of like The Good Son, but even creepier. Yes, uh, it's amazing. I, I just watched probably along this line. I know we've just become this podcast. Um, uh, Rob, cameraman Rob, uh, let, let me shocker. Oh. <laughs> it's I, rough. <laughs> well, what's funny is the in the U.S., um, House 3 is called The Horror Show in the U.S., and it's the same movie with some of the same people. Jeez. But, it's and it's even worse than Shocker. It's about well, we were joking. It's about three movies basically, it, kind of stitched I got together. I got a T-shirt at a convention for Shocker to, that they gave to make sure people would go see it, and I wore it when I went to the theater to see it, and I wanted to take it off on the way out so nobody realized that I had <laughs> I had the shirt. That's how bad it was. Oh, it's geez. such a fucking. There, I watched a ton of. Sorry, last thing I know you guys know, like about the Paperboy. I watched all three Stepfathers, and then the Good Son. <laughs> and oh, fuck. some other Lifetime movie that were all very similar. I'm I'm obsessed with movies where someone comes into the family that's screwed up. Oh, uh, Orphan is another one like it, where someone yeah. comes into the family and you don't know that they're screwy. The Paperboy is the best because 
he it starts with him putting a bag over an old lady's head and killing her uh-huh. like like 30 seconds of the like, movie like that's the in. opening credits yeah that's Jeez. basically the opening credits for the movie also the the other movie i would recommend to your listeners is amityville 2 the curse which is one of my favorite movies it's a it's supposedly an american movie it's not it's directed by an italian director and it's like hey i know you like amityville but how do you feel about a movie about incest because that's what this movie really is <laughs> It's like the most anti-Catholic well, movie I've ever seen. Orphan, kind of like that too. Yes, Orphan, got, like, and I, like, my girlfriend loved Orphan, so she's like, "We have to watch this." I'm like, about 20 minutes in, I guess the twist. I'm like, she wants to fuck that dad, doesn't she? Yeah. <laughs> like, we watched all four Flowers in the Attic movies for our podcast, so. <laughs> and it's been bad. But um, oh, I would recommend Amity too because it's really, really good. And like, anytime there's one scene where one of the girl, the uh, kids, tries to reach out to the Catholic Church for help, and they, she calls the rectory, and the priest takes the phone off the hook and hangs it down, and he <laughs> goes, "I'm going on a ski trip," and then everybody dies. <laughs> Great. Well, that, it's that, actually that's... written by uh, Tom and Lee Wallace, who uh, is directed Halloween three and uh, was one of the guys in the costume for Mike My- Michael Myers in the first Halloween. Jeez. Oh, Jesus. It's a really, and he also uh, directed The Stand. It's a really, really, really good movie. And where can people find more about your movies? Uh, BNSAboutMovies.com. This week is all just weird movies. Mm-hmm. Um, next well, two weeks are weird movies. And then I think I have, uh, wait, I, I do like theme movies, right? Can I tell you what my themes are for next month? Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. Because I, I get excited. I would really love to do. Uh, a movie night. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to hook something up. We got we got a pretty good size screen here. Uh, we we've done some yeah. some Nightmare Before Christmas uh, uh, movie nights and stuff for around then. Uh, so we're actually talking about doing something. Probably probably not the scary movies for the stuff we were talking about for the community. But we, we could do bi- something. Biker fun. Week coming up July twenty second. Biker all bike. Week. Yeah, all biker movies. <laughs> is uh, Har- is, wait 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 is Harley Davidson and the Marlboro Man a part of that? No, it should have been. It, but Werewolves on Wheels and Psychomania. It's so are random. In, and the Pink Angels, which is the only movie about a gay biker gang that's ever been made. <laughs> it's a movie for no one. Yeah. Like anybody that's a biker would hate it. Anybody that's gay would hate it. It's a horrible movie. It's one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Jeez. But I love it. Um, the other Hells on July 11th, which is a movie about it's a non exploitation movie which is great non exploitation i'm a big fan of that and then uh game show week is coming up in august and it has uh, uh the gong show movie which no one should ever watch I- i'll warn you about that <laughs> and um uh the gamer which you could probably enjoy and uh the original death row 2000 can you wait the newer gamer movie yeah 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 with which is um uh, i can't remember but the guy from dexter was the bad guy Yes. Yeah. It's a movie that like seems if it was made by an audience of they just asked the audience like what would you like to see? And, and randomly and randomly the news people are, are the cast from Psych. If I recall. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was like wow. a like I I was like oh this should be good but didn't. Uh, all right. <laughs> Anyways, we've done we've done like half of your yeah. podcast at this point. Mad Mike Sorry. 483 on the Twitter. <laughs> Yeah, you can find me at MadMike483. I talk about Raw and things like that. Also, go to at Mayhem Show. Look for the hashtag MM. I live tweet something much better than Impact called Lucha Underground. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, th- those are the places you can find Holy me. Holy crap. Shirley Doe, thank you so much for joining us again. You can also look up matches with Shirley Doe, uh, uh, past, present, and future, actually, over at IndiaWrestling.us. There's some good stuff in there. Um, some when you have an eye patch, I believe, uh, when I started yeah, seeing you in action. Watchman. Then uh, Corey Graves t- tore my eye out. Yeah, yeah, that's on there. That's <laughs> not many people can say that. <laughs> no. Thank you. So- I'm like, you know, you know what you should do? You should put my eye out. But he was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and Abyss was in that match too, TNA. That's right. That's right. Jeez. That's right. I tell you, hell, Abyss just showed up in Cleveland recently, this past weekend, I think. With, uh... Against my spiritual sons. Yeah, <laughs> against your spiritual sons. <laughs> I love those dudes. They're my favorite. The combination. Oh yeah, yeah, the combination, which uh, I just edited and posted on Stomp Out Cancer You with Atticus and with uh, Remy. Uh, I love Rem, Remy, and Atticus the most. Love it. Love. I it. love those guys. 
Thank you so much. And thank you, everybody. Again, we will be back live here uh, next Tuesday and uh, typically Tuesdays at 9 p.m. Eastern time on our Facebook Live for Wrestling Mayhem Show. Thank you so much. And until next time, please don't hurt yourself watching Impact. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Wait for the perfect time. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.